Hello everyone, my name is Omar. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. So today's topic is going to be route aggregation or supernetting. Now first we will see why do we need supernetting? What are the advantages an aggregate route offers over advertising routes individually? Okay. So what is route aggregation or supernetting? It is combining groups of routes with common addresses into a single entry and what advantages it is going to offer it is going to offer a reduced size of the routing table and less bandwidth and cpu utilization of the router i'll explain this point first now see you have let's say you have these many networks which are getting advertised by one router now since the router is advertising all these networks obviously the routing table size for the neighboring router is huge if I could combine this into one address, okay, and then advertise it, then it would reduce the neighboring router's routing table. Okay, so that is one advantage. So this is pretty simple to understand. Second is less bandwidth and CP utilization. What do you mean by this? Now, let's say if this network goes down, if this network goes down, then it comes back up, then it comes back up. In general, let's say it starts flapping. Now, when the network starts flapping, what happens is if this network goes down, there's an update sent to the neighbor that this network is down. If the network comes back up, there's another update sent to the neighbor that the network has come up. Similarly, for this, it has gone down, it has come up, it has gone down again, has come up again, and so on. Now, when you talk about two routers, let's say I have R1 over here and I have R2 and all these networks are advertised over here okay now behind the networks what do we have we have the actual host machines and these host machines are trying to access some data with each other like trying to exchange some information let's say they are having a file transfer process or they are having a web conference that is the actual data which we need to transmit over the network and we need to focus less upon the routing updates if the routing updates are eating up a lot of bandwidth on the cable so the actual traffic which is from the user that is fetching a choke second every time an update has been sent from one router to another router so it has to update its routing table that okay fine this entry is now present now absent now present now absent now present now absent now present now absent and it goes on so to avoid those things happening inside my network what we do is instead of advertising these routes individually we advertise the summarized route or a aggregated route or a supernetted network. The advantage of a supernetted network is the supernetted or the aggregated network will stay up as long as even one of these entries up. Let's say this gone down, this has gone down, this has gone down, this has gone down, this has also gone down. But if this is still up, the route, the aggregated route would still show as up. The aggregated route will go down only if all the networks are down. Now the question is what will happen to the packets if they are sent to these networks let's say they send to 10.1.20.0/24 so the router will drop the packet because obviously the network has gone down so that's pretty easy like and that's pretty simple like that's understood that it will drop the packet but instead of sending out updates every now and then if the network has gone down a network has come up so to avoid that problem, what we can do is we can just advertise one aggregated route and it would make our work much easier. So that is the concept about what a route aggregation is and how it will help us in the network. Now let's concentrate on the main topic of this video that is how do we do the aggregation. So you know, how do we calculate the aggregated route. Let me just clear this part first. And let me clear this as well. Okay. So now you have certain rules. The first rule is find the common bits. So let's say if I have all these networks, I have one, two, three, four, five, six networks over here. So the first thing I have to do is find out the common bits. Now, if you look at these entries, so 10.1 is common, right? 10.1 is common in all of them. Now I can advertise a route, let's say 10.1.0.0 slash 16. 
I can advertise this as 10.0.0.0/8. That is also correct, but we need to advertise it efficiently. What if I advertise this route and if I advertise this route, if there are other networks? Now, let's say I'll explain this, I'll illustrate this with an example. So, I have R1 and R2. Now, R2 is hosting, let's say, 10.1.2.0/24, and this is hosting all these networks like in you know, all these six networks so the 10.1.17.0 .1 .17 18 19 and everything and if i advertise a route 10 1 0 0 slash 16 or in that case if i advertise 10 1 0 0 slash 8 so what say what will happen r1 will start advertising this entire subnet but this network is also a part of that subnet 10.1.0.0 .1 slash 16 will also comprise of 2.0 slash 24 and that will be some wrong advertisement from our side. So we don't do that. We find out the most efficient or the nearest match and then we aggregate the route and then advertise them. So let's get started with what is what are the steps which we have to follow and how we have to do it. Okay. Now <coughs> the first thing is find out the common bit. So <coughs> sorry, 10.1 is common in all of them okay so i'll just try the 16 bits are common what about 17 18 19 now i will convert these into binary okay binary format and i'll find out how many bits are common again from between 17 to 22 so to do that i have just used a notepad file over here so i have represented 17 in binary format 18 19 20 21 and 22 and what i find out is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. is common in all of them you see 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. these are the common bits so first five bits are common what is changing is this part the last three bits this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. this is 1, 0, 0, and so on so i found out that out of eight bits five bits are common so in total how many bits i have found out common so in total I have found out that 21 bits are my common bits. So I'll just write it. 21 bits are my common bits. Then represent the common bits by 1 and the uncommon by 0. So let's go back to the notepad and do that. So let's say uh, I'll write it something like this. I'll see IP address 32 bits. So I'll just write down the common bits as 1. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is the first octet. That is 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Second octet, that was 10.1. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So out of this third octet, 5 bits are common and the rest of the bits are uncommon bits. They keep on changing. Okay, so what I have done is I have written 21 ones and I have written 8 zeros because 21 bits are common and the remaining, oh sorry, 21 bits are common and the remaining 11 bits are zeros. Okay, so once I have done that, then the second step is to find out the block size. So represent common bit by one and uncommon by zero. So this step is done, this step is done. Calculate the block size. Now, what is the block size? Block size is calculated on the transition point. So if you look at this representation over here, so here we have the transition. We have the transition from a zero to a one over here. So whenever we have a transition, the first one the point of transition that value is known as your block size and that is calculated per octet so if this is the octet so this is uh, 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 2 raised to 2 3 4 5 6 7 and this value over here this one's value is my common bit so what i'll do is i'll just uh, write it over here i'll write down all the common bits over here so let me give me a moment guys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And remaining zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. And let me get this over here. Okay. So what I have is I have all my common bits written and my uncommon bits also written. And this one is my transition point and what is the value of this one the value of this one is 2 raised to 3 which is equal to 8 
so that means my block size which i have to calculate which i had to calculate this coming to 8 my block size is 8 over here represent network with the block size now see i have found out the block size in the third octet so this is my first octet this is my second octet and my third octet and my fourth octet so i found out the block size in the second or third octet now let's write down my new networks as 10.1 now this is going to be common because you know this is we have to preserve it as it is then let's say start from 0 0.0, 0. and where did i find my block size 10.1.8.0 in the third octet next network will be 10.1.16.0 next will be 10.1.24.0 and it will continue and then i have to find my match now see this network will extend till 10.1.7.255 this will extend till 10.1.15.255 this will extend till 10.1.23.255 this will go up till 10.1.31.255 and did i find my match over here yes i did now see what are my network my network is 10.1.17 18 19 20 21 22 and all of them can be found over here so all of these networks are a part of this big network so what is my big network? My big network is 10.1.16.0. I'll just write it somewhere. I'll write it over here. 10.1.16.0. And slash how much? The common bits 1, 2, that is 8 plus 8, 16, 2 octets, obviously. 8 plus 8, 16 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 21 bits are common. 21 bits are reserved. The rest of the bits can change. The 11 bits can change. So if I have to represent this network as one network, I will write it as 10.1.16.0 slash 21. So this is my summarized network which I have calculated for all these individual networks. Now as I told you, 10.1.0.0 slash 16 was also correct. 10.0.0.0 slash 8 is also correct. Now theoretically it is correct because theoretically all these networks will be a part of that network as well but you have to calculate the most efficient aggregated network or else it can lead to a lot of problems in your routing so if if i advertise this now all these networks are a part of this big network now if someone says that you know what if i calculate a block size of 16 yes you can do that if you calculate a block size of 16 you will get a network of 10.1.0 dot 0 slash uh, 22 sorry no 22 20 right and the next network would be 10.1.16.0 slash 20 the next network would be 10.1.32.0 slash 20 now from 16 to 32 that is the next network 32 is the next network so from 16 to 31.255 <coughs> also all these networks are present but additionally 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, all of those networks are also present. So if those networks are a part of a different router, now let's say I will just uh, draw that scenario and explain so that it becomes better for you guys to understand. Now let's say I have R1, I have R2, I have R3. Okay, R1 has all these entries 10, 1, 17. So I'll just quickly write it down. 10.1.17.0 slash 24, 10.1.18.0 slash 24, and all the way up to 10.1.22.0 slash 24. And here I have entries from 10.1.25.0 slash 24 all the way up to uh, 10.1.30.0 slash 24. Now over here, if I advertise 10.1.16.0 slash 20 and over here also if I advertise 10.1.16.0 slash 20. So both my summarized networks, they have all these networks. So this has this also plus it has the other range as well that this range is also present. So if both of them advertise the same subnet. If R2, there's a client sitting on R2. So what R2 is getting updates? R2 is getting an update that 10.1.16.0 is, 10, is at with R1 as well as 10.1.16.0 is at R3 also. 
now where do I send the packet? So that would be inefficient routing. So to avoid that, what we do is we advertise some proper networks. So that means I will advertise if I have to subnet, if I have sorry, not subnet, supernet, if I have to aggregate these addresses. So I will aggregate them as my previous calculations. I'll just uh, okay, let me just erase this off. Right, and this also let me just clear this off as well. So I will be advertising a network 10.1.16.0 slash 21 because it will cover only this range. And over here I will be advertising 10.1.24.0 slash 21. Now this would be efficient match or proper more proper match. So R2 now knows that this entire range is with R1 and this entire range is with R3. So if any client wants to send a packet, R2 can take an efficient decision. And this summary will stay up till the time only if only a single network is also up in that summary or in this summary. So this is some like a quick uh, calculation which I did for the rest of the subnet, the rest of the networks. I obviously it's a part of a different network. So you can summarize that as well following the same steps. So be it any range of networks, what you have to do is you have to first find out the common bits. And using the common bits, you can calculate the subnetted network very easily. Once you get very efficient in doing that calculation, and obviously if you have experience in doing that, then it becomes very easy wherein you can just see the network and you can quickly do a calculation in your mind and you can figure out that this would be the aggregated network. So with experience, things will become easy. But if you're just starting with aggregation or if you want to start with very basics, this video or these steps will help you greatly in your career or in your daily job profiles. So, well, thank you guys for watching. I hope this has been informative. Do comment your thoughts below. Share this video with your friends, colleagues and whoever needs it. Do subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos on networking. Thank you guys. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.